What's up guys, Coach Alex here, and today we're going to have a train with me. And today we're going to be training lats and biceps, and the session itself is going to be more hypertrophy focused. So we're going to have a rep range of eight to 12 with most of our exercises. And I'm in a surplus, so know that, because if you're in a deficit, this volume allocation that we'll be doing today could be a little bit too stout for you. So you may want to do some adjustments on that front of maybe bringing down some sets or those different factors, but I'm excited to dig in to it with you. Okay. Oh. So, oh, that's perfect. Oh, dude, <laughs> this is gonna be good. That lines up so well. Wow, I am lit for that. Whoa. So for our first movement today, it is going to be a chest supported lat pull down with the emphasis being more of the iliac lat, which is going to be those more vertical fibers that we've talked to you guys about. And when we're talking about the bias towards the iliac fiber or the lumbar fiber or the thoracic fibers of the lat, it's not that they're going to be working in isolation. So when I am performing this, I'm going to be also getting lumbar fibers of the lat and those different factors. It's not going to be totally isolating the iliac fibers. So when you're riding your own training, you don't have to hit. Today, we are doing a specific lumbar movement, a thoracic movement, and a iliac-based movement, but you're going to have some overlap, so don't feel like you have to have a specific exercise for every division when you're riding your training programs. Counting to 12 is just not my forte. I'm pretty sure that was 13, but I would rather get 13 than 11. Yeah. <laughs> and I will answer the question of why not use the four in one bar, this piece here, when I am doing these pull downs, why not use this piece relative to using the short bar and the D handles? So I talked about the volume allocations being in the repetition allotment of eight to 12, and we've got quite a few sets today. And so what I want to do is ensure that my forearms are not going to be a limiting factor in today's session. Now, I, I've talked about how the, the rotate handles are fantastic for the mechanics of the hand, but I want to be able to use my Versa grips here and use the D handles to make sure that my forearms are not a problem throughout the entirety of the session. For the, the clients and viewers who look like they're having the hardest time in the world getting into the bench when performing the chest supported pull downs, the daisy chain is a lifesaver for you because this is going to elongate the cable to allow for you just to sit comfortably in the bench and just have the handles in your hand. Whereas if I had this connected to this cable, I would have like the acrobats. I'd have to like lean and use all my weight and then just keep like falling back. And at a certain point, my strength is just going to outdo me and I'm going to probably stumble and fall and the cable is going to fall out of my hand and it's going to be a way too loud of a noise and potential injury for me. So use these daisy chains. They're super cheap on Amazon and you'll have a much easier time performing this movement. I wanna give a little bit of a shout out here. I have been working with Adam Miller from N1 Education for three years now. Um, and this is the first time that he has programmed the single arm thoracic lat row um, in the prime functional trainer here. So as you guys are kind of watching, I'm figuring this out, I understand. And, and the, the big thing within the different divisions of the lat is that we are going to be more so paying attention to the line of pull through the cable or through the dumbbell or whatever is being used for the weight, but also the arm path that's being taken. Because when we look at those different divisions of the lat, to specify through the divisions is going to be a very nuanced difference when looking at, am I pulling from here? Am I pulling from here? Am I pulling from here? Is going to be working the lat in different ways. And so trying to find that line of pull for you specifically is going to be a matter of finding that arm path. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. Oh. Here we go. 
as soon as I take off the VersaGrip, it's just immediate forearm pump. And that's gonna be the, the individuals who hear that and are like, man, fuck VersaGrips. VersaGrips are stupid, you're never gonna have grip strength without, or if you use VersaGrips, they're gonna be like, told you, you get, your forearms are trashed after just one set. It's like, I don't know, man, that was kind of heavy for 12 reps. Like, it's just fatigue. Performing unilateral work is a great way for people to realize any imbalances that you guys may carry between, in this instance, a left and a right lat. You'll see with my right arm, I just carry better strength and potentially mind-muscle connection, those different factors with my right arm relative to my left arm. Um, and that's probably stemming from my athletic background, and that's a lot of individuals, is from an athletic, stand, or a, uh, athletic standpoint, playing baseball for myself, I was swinging left-handed, so I'm all of my, my power is generated from my, through my right side. And so within that, and then I'm also running the bases, running and opening with this right side. So a lot of the pulling motions on this right side of my body are just better than the left side of my body. They have millions of more repetitions pulling in this pattern, if you will, than the left side just because of the sports that I played. So, if you have imbalances, it's very common. Most individuals are not going to be perfectly symmetrical. Um, and utilizing the unilateral work is gonna be a good way to identify as well as potentially um, improve on that imbalance by maybe biasing a little bit more volume towards the side that you're having the imbalance towards. Getting a little cocky with it. I'm gonna come back to that 120 that I thought I was gonna be able to do for 12. I'm gonna get six. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Five with some partials on the left hand. All right, guys. So now we are doing what N1 calls the lat row down. You're targeting the lumbar portion of the lat with this movement. And so I use this band in the not most secure way to hold myself down in this seat. Um, it works for the time being. I've got to think of a better way to keep myself down because as the load increases, you'll see it will pull me up. I will be pulled by the cable itself. So just something to keep me into the seat with the band. What's crazy is that this is, this will be the third lat movement. My lats are like beat up. Like my lats are tired. We have one upper back movement after this uh, and then two bicep movements and we're done. Like it seems very straightforward. I know that most people, when you only have a training session that is essentially 90 plus percent cables, it's like, use a bitch, you need to do something different. I hear you, I, I felt that way before. But take yourself through this session and uh, you'll see. One thing that you'll notice when you're training lats and doing a great job of training lats is that your abs are going to be sore the next day because to have a, a, the most stable environment for your lats to work in is going to have a co-contraction co through the abdomen. So a lot of your 
like your iliac pull down or like your vertical pull down or any of your rowing, you're gonna be really crunching down on that abdomen to create a stable environment for that lat to really work to um, get a great environment. I'm still catching my breath, but it's a, a good thing if your abs are sore following your lat training. All right, so this is our fourth exercise. Now, through the first three exercises, we were targeting different divisions of the lats. So that first one, I talked about it being an iliac pull down, which is going to be the more vertical fibers of the lat. Then you're going to have the thoracic division, and those are going to be mostly horizontal fibers and gonna be the, kind of the upper division of the lat. That third movement you just watched, the row down, is specific to the lumbar fascia, and that is going to run in a more 45 degree angle. And all of this we've learned from N1 Education. This is a lot of the research that they have done has been finding the different divisions and, and how the lat fibers um, work and, and the, the angles that they're working at to have the exercises that line up properly. So we've done those three exercises. We've thrashed my lats. My lats are done. I'm No more lat training for me. Those three exercises are sufficient. Now we're going to be targeting the upper back. So the, the traps, the rhomboids, the teres, that musculature is going to be working um, in this pull down variation because this is the, the piece of equipment that many people, because of the internet, um, have been like, never use this. This doesn't have any use anymore. Only train your lats. There are other muscle groups in your back that are not your lats that this piece of equipment is going to be useful for, i.e. the upper back. I despise the absolute nature of like, this is good, this is bad, of the fitness community right now. Context matters so much that some of the stuff that everybody's like, this is horrible, it's like, well, in this specific context, it's okay. And so it's leading the people who don't understand the nuance or the context that are like, okay, well, that I, I should never do that, I should never touch that piece of equipment because, or whatever it is, because this person says it's totally wrong. And I get it from like a marketing standpoint of with TikTok and with Reels and all this, we have to have a something catchy and we have to we have to draw an attention and have a hook and it be this massive X and you're an idiot if you do this or you're stupid if you do this. It's like, it's all gonna work out. Just don't be so hateful. In the context of just training lats, yes, we were right. Like it's gonna be better for us to have more of depression of the scapula and driving the elbows out in front of us. But there's still muscles that are going to be trained pulling back more or pulling in the, this plane specifically. If you're a fitness coach or some, a fitness enthusiast and feel as though that you're, like you're wanting to build your brand and build a name for yourself within the fitness community, don't feel as though that you have to tear others down to bring yourself up. It is a, it is a acute dopamine response of people being like, yeah, you're right, and, and rallying around you. But it's a very empty feeling as well as the person that you may be making fun of or the person that you may be putting down in your post may truly have no idea that they're doing something wrong. And all you had to do is DM them directly and be like, hey, this is my understanding of this and this is why I think this is to be correct. And this is why I feel as though what you're doing may not be right. All it had to be was one simple direct message and you didn't have to make fun of them in front of their friends or in front of their potential customers to raise yourself up. It's just not necessary. All right. All right. So we have finished all of our, our back work. Now we're going to be moving into the bicep training. So we have two movements here. We're going to have a uh, facing away cable curl, which is going to be uh, targeting the biceps in the lengthened position. And then we're going to have a supinating dumbbell curl, which is gonna be more of the mid range as a, as a whole. So I'm excited, to, I'm excited to finish the session because I'm getting hungry, but I'm also excited to get into bicep training because it is something that um, I, I started my lifting career doing a ton of bicep training. As I've gotten older in my training age as a whole, I feel like it's the, one of the muscle groups that I just don't train as much, so I get excited when I actually do it. <laughs> I 
One thing that you do want to pay attention to when you have a facing away dual cable curl or anything, or a facing in or anything like that, is that as I curl this, I want, as I'm, as I'm curling, I want that cable to be through my elbow and my wrist. If I have this out of place, let's say that the cable's too far out and I'm still curling like this and that cable is outside of my arm. I'm not going to have discomfort right now, but over time, we could, dis we could create discomfort through this elbow and just put a little bit more strain on the joints than what we want. The more that we can get the cable directly through the joints, the more muscular tension we're going to be able to create relative to just putting more strain on the joints themselves. Man, following those facing away curls, this kicks my ass. Oh my goodness. Oh, I promise, I am stronger than 30 pound curls, I promise. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see how the second set goes. It's always the second set. Following, so just for your guys' knowledge, um, more often than not with a lot of your muscle groups, you're going to be the strongest in that lengthened position. And then you're going to be the weakest when you're in the shortened range. And so if you're training a muscle group through the lengthened position as we just did with the facing away curl, the likelihood that you're going to have maximal strength when trying to train that same muscle group in exercises following is going to be small chances. So understand that when you're tracking in your logbook of where the exercises fall in coordination with the other exercises that you're performing. Because if I was to just put this um, up against like my best supinating dumbbell curl ever in terms of the weight that I was using, this is not going to be a PR and I could be very upset with myself of like, gosh dang it, I'm getting weaker. The reality is, is how it falls into the structure of my training, it doesn't really work that way. So always be mindful of those small variances and context always matters. All right, toughen up here, buttercup. Let's have a better set than the first one. It's already starting better. Actually, it's sweating pretty decent. You know what you follow a good set with? Immediately going up. <laughs> this has been sitting here for a couple days. It's hot. <laughs> mm. Not too bad because it's Essentia. <laughs> it's hot, but it's Essentia. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. I roll it towards myself. It goes the complete. Now I can't even see it. I see it. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> Oh no. 
Oh no. Oh, I'm falling apart. Oh yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I was conquered by the 35 pound dumbbells today. <laughs> oh man. It is what it is. No way. <laughs> it's just, that's impossible. <laughs> Two. Three. Oh, I said. See, this, this is where mentality, oh. This is where mentality ruins you. I told myself four, I fail on four. No, I'm getting eight. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Six. <laughs> Seven. Eight. Nine. And 10. <laughs> Reward. Hot Asentia. <laughs> All right, guys, that is a wrap for today's session. That is all the back and all the bicep training for today. If you guys do try out this session, leave a comment below and let me know what you think. If you have not already, and I, I already see you, I, I see you, you haven't subscribed to the channel. You need to subscribe to the channel. You need to like this video and tell me how awesome the session was, like I said. So you guys enjoy your post-workout meal. I'm gonna go enjoy mine and have an awesome day.